Hey everybody, this is Ben with devslopes.com. And in this video, we are going to answer a couple of questions that you may be having. Like, now that we have the UI root, how do we control all these screens? What do we do when the player actually hits the droid or runs out of orbs? Some of those we're going to answer right here. We're going to create a UI controller for this UI root. But before we do that, a couple of important things need to happen. First, we need a way to tell what state the scenes controller is currently in. Then once we have that information, we can handle it according to whatever way we need to do it. So the first thing we're going to do is go into the pocket droids constants because we are missing a tag. So double click on that pocket droids constants file in your project explorer to open it in your IDE. And we're going to add a tag for the override orb. We're going to say public static string tag underscore override underscore orb equals override orb, the same way that we set it up in our tag manager. Save that file and head back to Unity. Now we missed an important step in our pocket droid scene manager. So let's fix that before it becomes a problem. Double click the pocket droid scene manager file to open it up in your IDE. In this public void droid collision, we need to add a keyword. And that keyword is going to go in between public and void. And we're going to say virtual. And basically what this means is it's got a declaration, but we can override it later. If we had made it abstract like these other ones, then it would be required for every class that inherits from the pocket droid scene manager class. Whereas virtual, we've got a default declaration and we can always update it. With that done, save the file and go back to Unity. Okay, with that setup out of the way, we need to get down to business with our scene manager. First, we need to know what state this is in. And we could use a couple of Booleans, but what we're gonna do instead is use a single enum. So let's create that file. Right click on the capture folder which is a subfolder of scenes, and we're going to say create C -sharp script. And we're going to name this capture scene status. Double click the newly created capture scene status file. And we're going to get rid of everything in this file at this moment, because it's not going to be a mono behavior class. This is just a reference thing. And we're going to replace it with public enum capture scene status and we're just going to have a couple of values in here we need to know if the capture is in progress whether it failed or if it was successful save that file go back to unity and now we're going to double click on the capture scene manager to open that file up in our IDE. And we're just going to add a single variable here and then a getter for it. We're going to add underneath the private int current throw attempts, private capture scene status, status. And then below our current throw attempts getter, we're going to say public capture scene status, status with a capital S. And we're going to say get return status. Perfect. Now we just need to add a couple of plugs to update this. We're going to set status by default to capture scene status in progress because until they've failed or are successful they're trying to catch whatever droids in front of them then we're going to go down to our orb destroyed function and we're going to replace this comment we have of run some code to end the session with status equals capture scene status dot failed because if they're out of orbs they have failed to capture the droid. And you may be thinking, well, what if the orb destroys itself after they've already hit a droid? And that's a great thought. 
So we need to put in a safeguard against that. And we're going to say if status does not equal capture status dot or capture scene status rather dot successful, then we'll run this code. Perfect. Now all we need to do is implement one feature. That function from our scene manager parent class that we just declared virtual, we can now override it. So let's say public override void droid collision. And it's going to take a game object droid and a collision object of other or named other rather. Cool. Now that we see that this is here, we're going to say status equals capture scene status dot successful. Because if we've hit it, then we've got success. Perfect. And for the moment, that's everything that we need to do in this class. So let's save that and head back to Unity. Our next step is to create a UI manager. So let's right click on the capture scene, go to create C sharp script, and we're going to call this capture scene UI manager. Double click the capture scene UI manager that we just created. And that should open it up in your IDE. The first thing we're going to do here is add a couple of variables. We'll need a serialized field, private, capture scene manager, manager. We're also going to need a serialized field for our three different types of UIs. So the three that we saw under the root. So private, game object, because that's technically what they are. And we don't need to do much special for them. So just private, game object object, success screen, and then serialize field, private, game object, fail screen, and serialize field, private, game object, game scene, or game screen, rather. Now let's get rid of start. And instead, we're going to use awake. And all we're going to do here is make a few assertions. So assert from the Unity engine, assert dot is not null, manager, assert dot is not null, success screen, assert dot is not null, fail screen, assert dot is not null, game screen. Cool. Now that we know those exist, we can do whatever we need to and not have to worry about it. Let's go down to the update function, get rid of this comment. And every update, we are going to do a switch statement. We're going to say switch manager dot status. And then we're going to handle those three cases. So in the case of Capture scene status dot in progress, because that's our most common case. We'll say handle in progress with a capital H, maybe. There we go. And then break. In the case of capture scene status dot successful, we're going to say handle success. And then, and then in the case of capture status dot failed, we're going to say handle failure. And then we're going to break. Okay. And then if for some odd reason it comes back as none of those, we're just going to break because that shouldn't happen anyways. But it's going to give me a warning saying that I didn't handle default if I don't. Now we just need to handle these three functions that we just called. And that's really easy. We're just going to say private void 
handle in progress. And then we'll create another one called private void handle success. And then one more function called private void handle failure. So let's start at the top. If the game scene is in progress, if they haven't caught anything yet, then we want to make sure that the only scene that's turned on is the in progress scene. The same goes for the handle success and the success screen and the failure screen. Now there's a much simpler way to do this, but I wanted to set this up so that it's extensible in case we ever want to do something more with these functions. Again, it's all about abstraction. So let's write one more function below. It's called private void update visible screen. And what we're going to do in the update visible screen function is we're just going to call to see what the status currently is and do a Boolean check against that. Maybe it's just better if I show you. So let's call our success screen. And then we're going to say dot set active. And we need to pass in a Boolean here. So we're going to say manager dot status equals capture scene status dot successful. And then we're going to say fail screen dot set active manager dot status equals capture scene status dot failed. And then for our game screen, we're going to set active. So game screen dot set active manager dot status equals capture status capture scene status rather dot in progress. So what this function is going to do is run through and say if the status is currently a success, turn on the success screen and the rest of these will turn off. And the same for the fail screen versus the success in game and game versus fail and success. Now, from these three functions, we're just going to call update visible screen from each of them. Now, we could have done this up in the update function, like I mentioned. But if we ever want to extend this, now we've got an easy way without having to go in and mess with the update loop. So let's save that and we'll head back to Unity. Now we just need to grab this Capture Scene Manager, and or the Capture Scene UI Manager, rather, and just drop it on to the UI root. And then we'll go down to the script in the UI root, and we're going to drag the Fail screen into Fail screen, Success screen into Success screen, and Gameplay GUI into the Game screen. And we want to grab our camera, which currently has the Capture Scene Manager script on it. And we're going to drag that camera into the spot for the manager. And in theory, we should now have access to whichever of these screens is appropriate for what's going on in the game. So let's press play and make sure that's happening. OK, so this main scene shows the way that it should. And that's expected behavior. But it started out that way, so we can't be 100% sure. Let's throw some orbs real quick. Cool. I hit it, and now this success screen pops up. Perfect. I can still drag around this orb, but we'll fix that later. Awesome. Our UI manager is now working the way we want it to. There's just one last thing to fix. If you notice, the number of orbs never changed. To fix that, we're just going to go to our Capture Scene UI Manager. So double click to open the Capture Scene UI Manager. And we need one more serialized field. Serialized field, private text from unityengine.ui, orb count text. Perfect. Now let's go down to our update function, pass the update function into handle in progress, and we're going to update the visible screen. And then as soon as we do that, we're going to say 
orb count text equals manager dot current throw attempts dot to string. Sorry, orb count text dot text. Let's save that. Go back to Unity. And we're going to grab the text out of our gameplay GUI and add it to the UI manager. So click on UI root in your project hierarchy. Scroll down and just drag this text into the orb count text section. And we should see it immediately update when we press play. Cool. We now have three. And we'll see if it drops to two when, yep. Awesome. It's working great. So our UI manager is now complete. We can move on to the next step and handle some scene transfers and the rest of what we need to get this game finished. Well, at least the start anyways. Great job following along. Your game is coming along beautifully, and I hope you're learning a lot about how all of this works and getting excited about customizing this game and really making it your own. This is Ben with devslopes.com, and we'll see you next time.